Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. Welcome back to episode two of Girl in Bloom. I don't have a big sister. And growing up, I don't really have anyone who could tell me about the things that I need to know and prepare me for womanhood the way that I would have liked to. For today's episode, we're gonna go through 10 lessons from a woman over 25 to women under 25. So grab your beverage of choice, sit down, get comfortable, let's do some makeup and let's have a chat. Number one, there are some people who just don't really want the best for you. There's some people that are just competing with you. And you'll notice this. You'll notice this in the way that they react to any type of news that you have to tell them, in the way that they take in that knowledge, in the way that they talk about you to other people. Like not everybody wants you to succeed. And so it is so much better to have a few people who are your friends. Let's say one, two, three people that are actually, you know, your good friends that you talk to and that you share your, your life with versus having like 25 people that you hang out with all the time. Because I mean, according to psychology, you can only realistically have deep, deep relationships with about five people. Anything more than that is often too much to handle. We have so much going on in our lives that if you're gonna spend all of your time with like 25 people, you're never gonna get anything done. To succeed, you need to find a handful of people who are on the same trajectory as you are. They are moving forward. They may not be in the same field or anything like that. That's not the point, but their actual character, dedication, their commitment to improving themselves is on par with yours, or even they're a little bit ahead of you. That's even better. And that brings us to number two. How do you go about deciding who is for you and who is not for you? Well, if you really wanna know what someone is thinking, stop talking. Listen, people will always tell on themselves because you ever heard of this saying, it's like, you can fool all the people some of the time. You can fool some of the people all the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. Yeah, people love to talk and they will talk themselves into circles. Now, I'm not telling you to analyze or overanalyze every single word that someone is telling you, but when you meet people for the first time and you're trying to figure out, okay, are they for me? Is this someone that I can gel with? Is this someone I can't gel with? Just listen, just listen to them. At best, you will find someone that you really click with that is on the same wavelength as you and they are committed to improving themselves the same way that you are. And at worst, they will just really think you're a great listener. <laughs> when you listen to them, listen to how they talk about other people as well because people tend to talk about people the way that they talk about themselves. If you love yourself and you are positive and you're happy with yourself, you're gonna speak about people kindly and positively and from a loving place. If there's someone who gossips all the time about other people, they're probably gossiping about you too. And they're probably just not in a place where they are accepting of themselves and love themselves. And because people cannot give you something that they don't have, just know that that person may not at this time be able to give you that best version of themselves because they're dealing with demons that don't involve you. So just listen to people. People will tell you exactly where they are at in their own journey. And side note on that, just because they're not in a particular place for the type of relationship that you're looking for, doesn't mean that you should cut them off entirely. Sometimes we need to give people grace. Maybe they're not exactly where they where we want them to be, but if they're at least working on becoming that best version of themselves, then I don't think that's necessarily a relationship that you need to cut. It just means that maybe they need help from you to get to that place, or maybe they need space to get to that place for themselves. These are actually two new concealers from L'Oreal True Match that I actually have been loving. This is their Serum Corrector with 1.5% hyaluronic acid. It's basically supposed to feel like an eye serum and obviously a corrector at the same time. I have N10 and N8. So I'm gonna use N10 to conceal what's on my face and then N8 for the inner corners of my face. Number three, it's okay to hold your parents accountable for their actions and for your upbringing without shaming them for it. Now, granted, you know, they did the best they could, they did everything they could, and like, you had a safe childhood, okay? Even though it wasn't 100% what you wanted it to be, it was still safe, right? And it was a good environment. If that is the case, then you can't berate them for decisions they made when they were no older than you are. Back then, they probably knew less than you do right now. For me, like, I'm 28, my mom had my brother when she was 25. 
So the things that she did, the circumstances that she had are very, very different from the circumstances that I'm currently living in. My mom was still in school when I was born. She was still in, in university, I believe, or college or something, nurses college. Considering I only have a job, no marriage and no kids, I don't have as many responsibilities as she did, which means that I have a lot more free time to read and educate myself and upgrade myself or whatever you want to call it, which she didn't necessarily have at the time. So I can't really judge her for what she did with the knowledge that she had at the time. What you can do is hold them accountable for the actions that they do now. So since you were 25, since you were 29, which is when she had me, what have you done since then? Since you finished, you know, school and you, you know, were a bit more settled in your career and you had more free time, what have you done since then to upgrade yourself, to upgrade your mentality, to learn about what are some things that they could have done better and what are some habits that they created back then that they can fix now. Holding them accountable puts a mirror to them and gives them that space to recognize their actions and their role in their own life, in your upbringing as well, and it gives them space to change. If after holding them accountable, they do not decide to change or upgrade themselves or do anything at all with that piece of information, you are absolutely free to distance yourself from your parents and don't make anybody make you feel bad for doing that. At the end of the day, if it's not helping you, if that relationship's not helping you move forward in any way, you don't need to engage with them. They're always going to be your parents. Don't make anybody guilt you into, but they're your mom, or but that's your dad, and you only have one dad. It's so funny that people always say that, like you only have one parent. Well, you only have one child. You only have one me. So what are you doing about that? And it's really unfortunate that oftentimes we have to like reparent our parents because they just are just not aware. I don't know, that generation is just a really weird generation. Once again, not a judgment, just an observation. But anyways, feel completely free to remove yourself from their life if they cannot get it together. And this is not just parents, this is grandparents, this is aunties and uncles, this is like anybody, friends, anyone who doesn't really contribute in that way. Anyone who's not holding themselves accountable for their actions and taking responsibility for their actions and the way that their life has turned out. Distance yourself from that because you don't want that energy in your life. Now, it's not about having animosity towards these people. Give them the space to change. And sometimes that change needs to happen away from you. And once they've done that change and they're ready to come back into your life, welcome them in with open arms because you gotta give people grace, but evaluate them. Remember number two, which is observe yeah observe them and observe their actions and that will let you know just how much they're allowed back into your life and what boundaries you need to create from here onward let's move on to number four move in silence not everybody needs to know what you're doing where you're going what are your goals what are your you know accomplishments what are your downfalls? Not everybody needs to know about these things. The reason being is because that's a lot of energy that you're putting into your goals. And remember, energy is everything. <laughs> you want only positive energy, energy that is for your success and for your ultimate good to be around those goals that you have. There are people that are praying for your downfall. Like that friend you keep holding on to that's actually your frenemy and doesn't actually like you. You keep telling them about what your goals are. They can be praying for that downfall. And prayer is powerful. I'm not talking about religious prayer. I'm talking about the words that we speak. I would suggest reading the book. It's an old book, but honestly, it's a good book. And I would say that it is a good basis for your understanding and leveling up your mindset. It's called The Four Agreements by Don, what was his name again? Don Miguel something? I don't remember his name, but I will leave it on the screen. Very good book for adjusting the agreements that we make with ourselves. And um, where was I going with that? Yeah, not everybody's for you. And basically in this book, he talks about being impeccable with your word because the words that we speak are actually spells. That's why we call it spelling. It's energy, it's magic, it's whatever you wanna call it. That's what prayer is, it's all the same thing. And so when people have this energy and they say certain things about you, they are casting spells on you. This could be positive spells or negative spells. It has power. And especially when you write things down, it has even more power. My point is that be careful about who is aware of your accomplishments or your goals, who is aware of what's going on in your life. 
because they can speak life into it or they can speak death into it. Don't talk about what you're gonna do before you do it. Talk about it after the fact. Now the people who are most closest to you, they can obviously know sometimes we need advice from the people closest to us. So once again, once you choose your circle wisely, you will have the right people by your side who will help get you in touch with, you know, people that you need to move yourself forward, who will help you network, who will help you achieve your goals even faster. They're like, oh, you know what? I know someone who's in that business. Yeah, we went to school together or I work with someone who does X, Y, Z. That's why it's good to have people in your circle. And I'm personally learning that because I'm kind of a loner. <laughs> I'm a very introverted person and throughout my life I've been more of the mindset that I can do it by myself I can do everything by myself because I couldn't really rely on anyone when I was little so I learned not to do it it's a defense mechanism and I'm currently working through it sometimes it's very helpful and necessary to ask other people around you for advice that's why lesson number two is lesson number two because everything else builds on that lesson number five men are not the enemy so be careful what you think what you say and what you do to men because that will determine whether you are becoming the same demons that you condemn. Sorry to say it, but some of the loudest voices in modern feminism are doing the exact same thing that the patriarchal men that we did not like the actions of did back then. I hear it so often and I used to believe it as well. It's like, well, if the men don't like the patriarchy in the way that it is today, then they shouldn't have created it. Do you understand that the men around today are not the men that were around back then? You, you do understand that that is like 50 years ago. Men of today are the people that you grew up with in class. And the men of today have been failed. No one cared about the men of today. The way that they were in school, no one protected these boys. No one taught these boys. A lot of them grew up in broken families just like we did. They weren't taught what it's like to be a man. They were often given responsibilities well beyond their years by their, their mothers, by their fathers as well. A lot of them were abandoned. A lot of them weren't. They weren't raised with love. They were raised with disgust. You know, my boyfriend talks about it all the time. Like as soon as a boy becomes like 13, not even like nine years old, he becomes dangerous. He becomes viewed as dangerous. He's no longer, oh, it's my little boy. He's so cute. It's more like he's dangerous. I don't know what he's going to do. There's like this switch that happens where everyone starts looking at you like you were the problem. You're literally 13 years old. You did nothing wrong. And that is the way that the world sees you. They see you as dangerous. They see you as uh, a monster. They see you as, you know, it's, it's really sad the way that the world treats you treats boys. I remember in elementary school, if I was misbehaving versus my brother misbehaving, the punishment that he'd receive would be so much more severe than I would ever receive. I'm talking grounds for suspension and expulsion over something that I would literally just get a talking to because of. They're told that they're disruptive because they don't behave the way that girls behave. And like, boys are supposed to be disruptive. Go in the wildlife. You will never see Teenage boys, young boys, never not butt heads. It's supposed to happen. It's a part of what they're supposed to do and they need a space to do so. And you know what they're missing? They're missing the men telling them that that's okay. That part of growth is healthy for boys to develop into men. And because they were never told by actual men that these things were normal, they've actually been shunned by society because of doing those things. They grew up and a lot of them are being raised by podcast boys who were also raised by the same mentality. So it's just going in circles and in circles and in circles. What those boys needed was men. What the men of today need are women. It is a relationship between a boy and his mother that turns him into a husband, that actually makes him gentle and soft and emotionally intelligent. It is his mother that does that. Also, it breaks my heart when I see women say like, oh, we don't need men, we don't whatever. Yes, we do. How the hell do you think that society is supposed to move forward? Where in natural science do you see this happening? It doesn't happen anywhere else than in human society. I definitely had to relearn all of these things because my concept of marriage, of love, of men, of myself was so warped from the 
from the images that I saw throughout my entire life in my childhood. So I had to seek out ways to change my mentality. And some of the books that helped me, All About Love by Bell Hooks, I will always recommend people reading this book. The second one is We Real Cool, Black Men and Masculinity by Bell Hooks as well. Now this one is definitely from like a black perspective, like obviously it's about black men and black masculinity. I do think a lot of her her books are very like black coded. She, she really does not like the patriarchy, but I still think it's a really good read. But it's not about like being involved with every single man you come across because okay, that's not safe. It's not safe to be involved with every single woman you come across either. There are men in your life. You probably have a brother or a cousin or a nephew or you have a boyfriend or you have a father. It's about being kind to those men in your immediate vic vicinity. And those men get that love and that validation from women they can truly step into their masculinity and they can go and help other men. Anyway, number six, learn to think for yourself. Be curious, think critically, and have discernment. As someone who's been creating content online for like 10 plus years, they'll ask me questions that I've already answered or questions that I couldn't possibly know. Questions that like, well, you need to ask the company. You can go on the website for yourself and find particular information. And this is not me being mean. This is, I've seen it not only in my videos and other people's videos as well. The questions that people ask sometimes, I'm like, do you think for yourself? It's helpful to have someone be like, okay, here's where you can start. But remember, those are starting points. You still need to have some agency over your life. The same way we hold our parents accountable for the actions that they did and did not do, hold yourself accountable for your own learning. People just really need to take agency for themselves and for their own learning. And also when you see things and they're not quite right, you need to have some discernment. Don't just take anything that anyone tells you as fact or as truth. And this goes for me too, because my opinions, and like I will always say, they're my opinions. I am not the ultimate judge. This is my opinion about something because it is getting scary out here. It is really getting scary. Be curious, ask questions, ask yourself questions, <laughs> have self conversations, have that discernment for yourself. The next thing is about reading. Like I said before, your parents probably didn't have time or the information readily available because books were expensive back then to have the information that we have access to right now. So read, okay? And when I say read, read about politics, read about history, read about spirituality, psychology, and nutrition. The things that they teach you in school, honestly, <laughs> But, um, oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to add to that was finance. Learn about finance as well. Research it for yourself, okay? Investopedia is available. Um, Psychology Today is available. Read some articles. Uh, learn about history. There are so many documentaries on history. People have done the work for you. One of my favorite YouTube channels for learning about history and things of that nature is Crash Course. Crash Course has so information and their visual infographics it will open your mind to the rest of the world and it will give you that confidence to have your own opinions about different things because you've read different things you know what I mean number eight learn to do your own self-care it will save you a ton of time and money in the long run you can have things done for you like your nails or your lashes if that's what you choose to do based on like special occasions but it should not be your daily bread it should not be the standard if you are spending twenty five hundred dollars a month on just self-care maintenance what are you doing what are you twenty five hundred dollars in this economy why there's no excuse there's no excuse in this day and age Jackie Ina, Lisa Eldridge has been telling you how to do makeup since 2009, like y'all can do this. It's okay to not know something, okay? It is completely, don't feel shame for not knowing something. It just means that you weren't exposed to it and that's okay. But once you realize that you don't know something, if you're not doing anything to fill that knowledge gap, what are you doing with your time? We all need to take some agency and accountability over our lives and make moves to doing that. For me personally, like I learned how to do extensions, how to put extensions in my hair long before I learned how to care for my natural hair. I had to confront that and be like, listen, Keisha, like you should know how to do these things. And then when I realized I didn't know how to do that, I sought out information to try to learn about my own hair. Anyways, and then of course you practice. And that's why now I know how to do my own natural hair because I sought that information and I practiced. Okay, let's do some mascara. Number nine, 
you should get in the habit of having friends both younger than you and older than you. I know a lot of people that only have friends who are their same age, and that's great and all because it's nice to have people, you know, in the same room with you, but you should have some friends in different age groups because there's so much that you can benefit from and they can benefit from by being friends with you. For example, having friends that are younger than you will help keep you accountable. I have so much respect for the younger generation, for Gen Z, like y'all are really good at keeping people accountable. You keep yourselves accountable, y'all call yourselves out, at least the Gen Z that I know. <laughs> there are some out there questionable, but <laughs> the ones that I associate with, they are really good at holding themselves and other people accountable. They will always call you out and we all need that in our lives. Older generations, like older millennials, as well as um, Gen X. Gen X, like I have a whole, whew, Gen X, y'all are a lot. But the ones, like I said, in my circle, the older generations provide you wisdom because they have the experience. They've gone through those different stages. They have evaluated their lives and seen, you know, where they could have done this instead of that, how that could have shaped their lives. And they are really great at foresight and being able to say, okay, I see the situation that you're going through. Here is my advice based on the knowledge and experience that I have. And I can give you advice now that I've already experienced something, right? So it's really valuable to have both people's uh, opinions. Because my mom was a single mom, I used to hang out with a lot of her friends, a lot of people older than me, and we would have conversations. And I'm saying like, I was like six, seven, nine, ten 10 years old. And the people that I spent the most time with are people that were in their thirties. My uncle is the person who taught me about finance. I would not have known about finance if my uncle did not tell me anything about that. And even in my friend group till this day, I am usually the youngest. Before I moved to Edmonton, because I've made new friends here as well, my friend group, like I'm the youngest. All of them are in their 30s. They are at least two years older than me. And that wasn't by like design or anything. I just, I'm, I gravitate to older people. I've always gravitated to older people. And currently in Edmonton, I'm looking for an older couple. My boyfriend and I are looking for an older couple that we can be friends with. You know, I have a lot of friends here in, in Alberta that are younger than me. Most of my friends here are like around 25, 26. And then my friends back in Toronto are like in their 30s. And so it's nice to have a little mix. But yes, I'm looking for friends that are in their like 40s, maybe in their 50s as well. I think those type of relationships are so beneficial because they help keep you guided they help keep you moving forward i think a lot of our generation we're missing people at that next stage of life and that and that right there is my quorum with gen x because they're like missing the elders are missing like where are our elders we're kind of just walking around with nobody there to tell us anything and that's partially why i'm making this girl in bloom series because I recognize that that's not there. And me, I mean, I'm only 28, but the knowledge that I have at 28 could benefit a lot of people. And so that's why I'm making these videos. But yes, have some friends in different age groups, very important. And finally, number 10, stop caring about other people's opinions. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with people on my spiritual page, Cardinal Healing. And the biggest advice that I often give like my clients is that you need to stop caring about other people's opinions being afraid that people are going to judge you being afraid that people think something of you i promise you people are not thinking about you as much as you think they are people are living their own lives people are so focused on their own lives to have any time to think about you. The things that you see, like your nose doesn't look quite right or your lips are not quite even or your face is a little, you know, whatever, or your body or that one little freckle that's on your hand, nobody notices, no one does. No one notices as much as you do because people are too busy occupying themselves with their lives. Honestly, I feel like this lesson right here is the overwhelming piece that you get when you cross 25, you stop caring about people and it is so liberating when i say caring about people i mean their opinions you care you love people but you are keeping your peace if someone doesn't vibe with you okay bye you learn to let go you learn that not everything is about you if someone 
is treating you a particular way it's not about you it's about them the naysayers the people who tell you that you can't do something because they haven't done it or because they're jealous that you're doing something that they didn't do for themselves like stop caring about it stop caring about it the people who are actually for you will be encouraging your growth they'll be encouraging you to get that education if that's what you choose to do or, or do an online course that's cool too the people that are encouraging you to level up and to read and to improve yourself those are the people that you want around you those are the people whose opinions that you should actually be caring about if all else remember that the life that you're living right now is the life that your younger self only dreamed about i am living my wildest dreams i'm living my ancestors wildest dreams those are the only opinions that i care about do i like myself am i proud of myself is my younger self proud of me that is the only thing i care about and then of course like i care about my boyfriend's opinion of myself of course because he holds me accountable i care about my friends opinions because they hold me accountable when you look in the mirror do you like that person do you like the habits and the behaviors and the processes that you're building currently if that's yes keep going if that's no examine yourself the same way that we hold our parents accountable for their behaviors and their attitudes and whatnot you need to hold yourself accountable for that as well that is the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below and let me know if any of these lessons really stuck out to you or if you are older than 25 and you have some advice that you want to give to the people under 25 as well, leave them all down below. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Girl in Bloom. To see the previous one, click over here and I will see you in the next one. Bye.